Let me know when you're ready. Ready. Ready? Stand by. Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by, I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're gonna be talking about a pistol that I have been keeping my eye on for quite some time. Now, before we get into the video, I just need to take a second to say one little thing to hopefully make this video as transparent as humanly possible. We are going to be talking about the Springfield Prodigy, and I have not been the biggest fan of Springfield for a number of different reasons. We can talk about that in a later video, but one of the things that I have said in the past is if I were to ever sell out, there would be signs, <laughs> and that came on the heels of uh, all of the different content creators putting out videos on the Springfield Echelon. Um, obviously Springfield knows how to run a marketing campaign, so I can't fault them from that, but, um, I have not been included on that. I have no relationship with Springfield whatsoever. In fact, the Springfield prodigy that I will be reviewing, I paid for out of pocket from my local shop and I'm not getting paid to say anything good, bad, or indifferent. Now, uh, I will say that my opinions about Springfield have softened a little bit and am open to looking into some of their pistols, uh, but not UXD. We're, we're not talking about XDs. <laughs> With that being said, let's get into talking about the Springfield Prodigy. Uh, like I said, I have had my eye on these pistols for a couple of years now and had my first experience with the Prodigy in 2023 at the range day of SHOT Show. I did want to take a look at it, fire a few rounds through it. I think I got about uh, 30 or 40 rounds through one at range day and walked away very pissed off. And the reason for that is because I really liked it. <laughs> it was almost like cheat code uh, shooting at the targets they had set up about 10 yards away. Every time I pulled the trigger, it was hitting the target exactly where I was aiming. So I was very, very impressed with this pistol, but I just kind of forgot about it and didn't really do anything with it. Entering this year, I'm looking at a various number of different 2311s. We've already looked at the Oracle Arms 2311. Uh, I hope to be able to look at the Gerson 2311. We're taking a look at the Prodigy and then maybe see if I can get my hands on a Staccato and do a little bit of a comparison amongst all of them. So with that being said, I found this used at my local shop. American Cash Exchange, uh, it's kind of my home away from home, I guess. Love those guys, they're a big supporter of the channel. And uh, when this was uh, in their glass case, I looked at it and I was like, you know what? We're gonna give it a try. This was uh, used by a friend of the shop. Uh, they know the guy very well. He said that he had only put about 50 rounds through this and uh, just needed some cash to pay some bills, so he unloaded it, and I ended up picking it up when, uh, when I saw it. So that is the history of it being quote unquote used. I have since put approximately a thousand rounds through this through a couple of different um, competitions, regardless if that was my local IDPA match, local two gun matches, or even here recently at the Kalashnikon match as well. So between that, zeroing in the red dot, shooting it at the range to get comfortable with it, um, we have approximately a thousand rounds through this. So let's dive into this. This is going to be very similar to that of a staccato style 9mm 1911. Um, this is known as the 1911DS because it is a double stack 1911. Uh, that has a metal frame with a polymer grip. 
So that is going to be very similar to that of a staccato. With that being said, Springfield is utilizing staccato magazines. So if you have staccato magazines already, it will run in the Prodigy, but they have also created um, their own kind of Springfield branded magazines, which are about half the price. So uh, that is a huge win when it comes to finding a double stack 9mm 1911 that is going to be very budget friendly. However, it has some trade-offs. Because of the price point coming in right around that $1,400 range, depending on whether or not you have a red dot added to it or not, uh, that could increase or decrease the price. However, what Springfield has done is they've cut the corners on a number of different components, making the price point lower. So the overall cost to Springfield to build these uh, are at a lower point, and then they have their own internal markup uh, to send it out to distributors slash the public. With that being said, they are utilizing MEM parts. So metal injected molded parts like the safety selector here, the trigger shoe, and some of the other internal components are all going to be MEM parts, which are not as rugged as a normal like forged component, right? So we have seen issues with the safety selector being sheared off. Uh, we've seen other components break uh, ahead of when they probably should have, I would say. For me, I have not seen that so far, but I have not had a perfectly running 1911 here. The double stack 9mm 1911s are a bit finicky, so you are going to have to do an intentional break in period. You're going to have to stay on top of uh, PMCS, you know, standard cleaning, lubricating, so on and so forth. You will have to run the pistol very, very wet. So each and every single time you go out to the range, I highly recommend adding some uh, lubrication to the rails and the hood for the barrel and some of the other components as well. So just keep that in mind. I intentionally ran this as hard as I possibly could for the first 500 rounds and did run into some minor issues, some failures to feed, some um, failures to eject. I think I had one stove pipe and then I had another instance where the slide would actually hang up. It wasn't that it was getting locked to the rear or something. It was cycling, hanging up for about a second and then coming back forward. I talked to a couple of different people, read some things on some forums and said, and what I've seen is that the feed ramp needs to be uh, tended to polish it a little bit, uh, maybe add a little bit of lubrication to it and that will help uh, kind of break that in a little bit better. Another thing that I've ran into is while I'm shooting this, I can feel every 20 or so rounds, the slide become very sluggish. Normally with a polymer frame striker fired pistol, such as a Glock or a CZ P10C, you never really notice the slide actuating. With this, you will notice that from time to time. It could be because of a underpowered cartridge. Uh, it, it could just be it's getting dirty, uh, but there is that. I did not clean this for the first 500 rounds. And what I did notice is uh, after about 500 rounds, even though I've lubed it up, uh, but not cleaning it, it is going to kind of have a bit of an out of battery. So just like just ever so slightly, all I had to do was press forward with my thumb and it would start working. Uh, but it was running into some issues. So again, most of you watching this video who are very attuned or know what is going on with these style of pistols, know that you're going to have to maintain them. Uh, you're going to have to be very intentional on that, in, uh, on that maintenance as well. So there is that. So let's take a break here and talk about the red dot. So the original red dot that came with this was one of the hex dragonflies. And to be frankly honest with you, I did not like that red dot whatsoever. Um, 
it, it's, uh, I would say something very similar to like a Vortex Venom. It's only got one button on it. You have to cycle through all of the brightness settings to get to the one that you want. And I, I'm just not a fan of that. I like a red dot that has a plus and a negative so you can move up or down on your brightness settings. And then uh, additional features such as, uh, you know, auto off and, and those types of things. That's what we have here with the Nightwing SPO320. This is a red dot. Full disclosure, it was sent to me for me to uh, do some reviews on it. I'm not getting paid to say anything good, bad, or indifferent, just like the pistol. But it was sent to me and I'm looking into it. I have put it through a bit of a torture chest. I've dropped it on the red dot several times from about three feet onto the tailgate of my truck. I've also racked it against the tailgate of my truck and I have seen zero shift in zero. So, <laughs> zero shift in zero. Allow myself to introduce myself. <laughs> but this red dot is uh, pretty nice. It is a RMR footprint. So that is pretty standard for a lot of people. Uh, it is durable and I think is going to be one of those red dot companies that is going to challenge the likes of Hollow Sun. Uh, one of the only issues that I've seen with this so far is shooting this uh, just this past weekend at my local two gun match. The red dot in a bright sunny day is just ever so slightly dim. Um, I wouldn't say that you couldn't see it in a brightly lit day. I just prefer it to be just a little bit brighter, but uh, for most people, that's not going to be an issue. Uh, so there is that. The red dot is coming in right around the $199 mark, depending on when and where you buy it. Uh, you can find them on Amazon and they do offer um, you know, discounts from time to time. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link in the pinned comment as well. Now, originally the plate for the red dot was set up for the Hex Dragonfly, uh, which was the quote unquote like Springfield proprietary setup. Uh, Springfield has come to their senses since then and have offered other footprints for their plates as well. So you have the option for an RMR or a doctor's footprint or whatever you decide you want to run. I prefer red dots for these type of quote unquote duty style pistols. And uh, so when I purchased it, it did have the hex dragonfly on it, didn't like it. Um, whoever owned it last didn't quite set it up correctly. It was missing a bolt and the bolt that was in or the screw that was in uh, wasn't the correct screw. So I had to completely take it all, all the way off and then uh, get an RMR footprint, which is the one that I like. Now, what I will say that I do like about this particular setup for this plate is that it is kind of dovetailed into the slide cut. That's something that is going to help make this a little bit more rigid, a little bit more uh, locked in, if you will. And so that has been a uh, very nice uh, added bonus. I did notice that the plate did walk loose at about the 200 round mark, uh, but overall, not that big of an issue. I've had that with other plates as well. I just took the screws out, cleaned them up, put some more Loctite on them, torqued them to spec, and it has held for the next, what, 800-ish rounds since then, so no problems there. Some of the other features uh, with this is it has a really nice fiber optic front sight and uh, a blacked out serrated rear sight that is co-witnessed with this uh, red dot, so it's a lower one third. So that's a good way to help find that red dot as you're bringing it up to aim. Grip texture on this is really nice. Uh, not over aggressive, not under aggressive. It's like freaking Goldilocks right in the middle there. I really, really do like it. Um, again, magazines have had zero issues. I have four magazines, which are three 17 rounders, this 120 round magazine, and they've all worked very, very well have a TLR1 HL on here only because I run the Blackhawk Omnivore holster yep. and a uh, great setup for someone like myself who is constantly rotating through pistols. Uh, just 
attach the TLR1 to any pistol and the Omnivore holster will work. So uh, all in all, I'm extremely impressed with the Prodigy. I, to be frankly honest with you, was hoping that it would fail. I was hoping that it was going to crash and burn and uh, no, it really hasn't. The only thing that I would say is if you do purchase one of these and you purchase it brand new, number one, make sure that you go through and you clean and lubricate everything before you start and then expect some issues with it within the first, I would say probably 250 to 500 rounds. I would say at minimum, you should shoot 200 rounds of 124 grain NATO spec ammunition. Uh, just to kind of really work itself in and then from there you should be good to go Hey, these are uh, Bellum 124. I want to say uh, real quick Thanks to global ordnance for providing the ammo for this review Really do appreciate it again Bellum 124 9 millimeter Check my zero real quick. All right, not too bad. A little low, which is what I expect for uh, seven yards. Realistically, if I'm being honest with you, I actually believe that this might be a contender, if not the pistol for me to run in competition. Uh, it's easy to shoot. Uh, I do need to work on a few things. I have noticed shooting a little left and a little low left at times. Uh, that is probably just me, but I may need to you know, check the zero on my red dot from time to time. Shooter ready. Yep. Stand by. Ah, come on. He pushed the car. Yeah. I see clear, sir. Range safe, 598. I don't think it cut it. No. I got, no. I only got, uh, no, no, you got it. Yeah, just, just missed one, one, two, th one no, move. you got yeah, one, I two, three, one. four, five. Oh, <laughs> you I did get it. You did it. You got it right there. <laughs> but ultimately, this pistol has been phenomenal and uh, okay, shoot ready. I hate to say it, 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 it may be my go-to for shooting competitions in the future. So there is that. All right, so there you have it. There is the Springfield Prodigy. Let me know what you guys think. What do you think about the Prodigy? Is it a nine millimeter double stack 1911 that you would like to have or would you rather save up the money and spend the additional thousand dollars on a staccato sound off in the comment section down below i'd love to hear what you guys have to say i've had a lot of fun with it like i've said and it may end up being the competition pistol for me but with all of that being said i leave it to you guys you figure it out for yourselves this is just my opinions on my experience so far We'll go ahead and get out of here. Thank you so very much. Swing on by and check out the Live, Laugh, Lark podcast. I'll leave a pinned comment below where you can find that. And we'll catch you guys next time. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.